What is up, friends? <sighs> All right, who wants to talk bikini competition? I know you guys have been waiting. Some of you have been waiting. Some of you are like, what the heck, dude? You haven't told us anything yet. <laughs> I know. That's because Elle is going to interview me about it on our Kick-Ass Life podcast this coming Wednesday. So if you want to hear like all the scoop of my thoughts and my experience with doing a bikini competition, we'll be getting into that. And you guys know Elle asks good questions because she is the host of the Primal Blueprint podcast. So she is a pro asking questions. Um, so we'll get deeper into it then, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit, a little bit of my experience. Cause I know like all you know is that I was kind of against it. And now all of a sudden I'm doing a second show and it's like, wait, what's going on? What's going on? So I want to give you guys a little bit of the scoop. So, um, all right. A few things learned from that first experience. The first thing is that the coaching that you experience in doing a prep for a show makes a big difference. And, um, I feel like the coach that I had did an excellent job and he's still coaching me. And that's, um, Damien Segovia, the producer here on Instagram, um, from the pros and uh, based out of Arizona, excellent coaching. Not at any point during this journey, did I not have all three macronutrients? Okay. There was never any like starving of fats or carbs. Yeah. Like they went low. I had to be in a calorie deficit. I had to be uncomfortable for sure, but it wasn't anything dangerous. So that was the cool, one of the cool things. Also, he had me on adrenal support. Um, I continued to take all my own, you know, magnesium and uh, krill oil and all the things that I normally do to support optimal health. Um, so really like from a, like hurting your body, that's just what I want to talk about because there are people that come out of these situations a bit wrecked, right? There are people who get coached in a way that they're like not eating any fat or carbs for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on end. What was that? To me, that's irresponsible coaching. That's just my opinion because like, I'm like, how is that person supposed to like not have their whole life fall apart when they're in that kind of mental state? Like, holy cow. Like, does it have to be like that? Is there not a more, um, <laughs> intelligent way to coach somebody, honestly, than, than doing that to them. So that does exist. Um, I also think that part of the reason, you know, I had a client, um, just pick back up with me and we talked the, uh, yesterday on the phone and she was like, why do you think like it didn't, doesn't hurt your body? And I was like, well, the first thing is because I don't chronically stress my body. I, when my body wants a caloric surplus, most of the time I give it that, you know, cause I'm, I eat well. If you eat real food and you eat vegetables and things that are nutrient dense and not calorie dense, you can stay pretty lean without having to be like psycho about your food, right? So um, I think because I eat so well most of the time and my body's coming from a healthy metabolic place, just going purely a little bit uh, into a calorie deficit, it's not going to be that damaging. <laughs> you know, it's not going to, a little bit of stress on the body for a short amount of time or even a decent amount of stress on the body for a short amount of time is not going to ruin your body. Our bodies are resilient. Sometimes we treat our bodies like they are like the most fragile little things ever. Um, chronic stress. So let's say you have some sort of budding autoimmune is disorder that you don't really know about, or you constantly calorie restrict all the time. And you've been doing that for years and you eat like only the same three foods for like the last six years of your life and you have no nutrient variety and there's no sort of supplementation going on and you're stressed and you're not dealing with any of your emotions and like, holy cow, like, okay, now we have a lot of things stacked against us. So I say like, because I feel like I have a healthy mindset, because I feel like I have a healthy body, like going into a period of eight week calorie deficit is not gonna, I don't think that's gonna destroy my body, right? So that's, that's been it. Um, training, training has not felt that different. If you guys have any questions, let me know. <laughs> Sweet. I'm getting a text from L Russ right now saying that Mark Sisson is basically, uh, giving the endorsement, not, he's not really, but he's talking about keto and in and out principles and metabolic flexibility. Yep. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, let's see training. The, here's the other thing too, is like my training is already at a high level. So it wasn't that big of a change for me, right? It was more intense. They're not messing around with those workouts, <laughs> the pros, but it wasn't that much more than I'm used to. Right. So 
I guess what I'm saying is like I went from 13% body fat to 10% body fat. That's not like a huge change, right? So that's why I feel like after going through that, I feel like now like there's one more show. It's in three weeks. It's three weeks from tomorrow and it's right here and I'm already invested in all the things. And I'm like, okay, I have the ropes now. I get it. I know what it takes. Um, I want to see what it's like if I actually want it. What happens if I actually want to win? Because I'm telling you, this last time, just to be real, like, my heart was not in it. It was like, this is a professional development experience. This sucks. Like, I admit, I was kind of going into victim mode a little bit. Can you share the training with us? I'm not going to share Damien's training with you guys because that's messed up to share somebody else's. But I actually am making a program myself of um, getting ready for bikini body. So that is why I am dolled up right now and actually have makeup on because I did the video shoot for that today. So I'll be sharing with you guys all my favorite meals, the things that I eat. Um, yes, there are a lot of veggies because that is like the super key to being able to do it. Um, so that will be coming out after my next show. So if you guys want to see how to train, like about it's gonna be intense. Like it's not, this is not gonna be like some, it's not gonna be a beginner program. Like if you're going from zero and you've never worked out before, like you're gonna die. <laughs> I'm just being real. It's, it's like if you want to really sculpt your glutes and hamstrings and shoulders and tiny waist and lose some body fat through your nutrition, then yeah, it'll be excellent for that. Um, my screen just like went dark. I don't know what happened. Um, um, what was I talking about? Training. Oh, this is the other thing that I wanted to share. <laughs> okay. So like what was so interesting and I, I like, I like getting my ass handed to me sometimes, right? I like eating humble pie, humble pie. I don't know. It's like when I, when my paradigm gets flipped and I'm like, Ooh, I was being a judgmental a-hole. I kind of like it sometimes. So I went into this thing thinking, um, this could hurt my body. This hurts people's bodies. But you know, what has been so interesting about it for me. It's actually been very healing to my body. I mentioned this once before, but what I mean by that is because it's an aesthetic, this is totally an aesthetic sport, right? It's how do you look, which is like, yeah, that's part of the reason I was like, not that driven. It's like, I don't bleh. like I, everybody wants to look good, but it's like, can't we just look good as a byproduct of like being a badass and like <laughs> doing cool shit. Um, but anyway, what's interesting is, okay, well, if your glutes aren't strong enough or your core isn't strong, isn't strong enough, it's not going to look good aesthetically. So purely for me having to get to a better place aesthetically, I had to correct things in my body that were weaknesses. So like doing vacuums and getting all my core, like all these things that were tight, getting those all loosened up, getting some stuff on my back that was like tight and like my sh one shoulder was like higher than the other. <laughs> I'm making myself sound so sexy right now. <laughs> Basically I was like, like the hunchback in order name. No, it wasn't that bad, but having to get those things fixed for aesthetic reasons actually has helped me move so much better. And like my glute strength is so much stronger, even after just eight weeks of hardcore training. And now like I'm going bananas. Cause like once something, once it starts to work, once the neurological connection is there, like, Oh, watch out. So glutes are coming along. I gotta pull this close to me. Sorry. I can't see my, my phone like went all dark. Do you think someone with hypothyroidism could ever do something like this? Um, yes, but I would say not right now. Like if you're still in your hypothyroid journey, I would not recommend it. Not even close because like, it's like if you're hypothyroidism is basically something's going on from an inflammation standpoint usually, but something's going on in your body where it's kind of teetering. It's like, Hey, like be nice to me. Please be gentle with me. And this is like the opposite of that. So yeah, no, I would not. I could someone with hypothyroidism ever do it? Yeah. But I'd say like heal baby, heal, take time off, go walk in nature, do your um, emotional healing work because that is a huge part of it. It is a huge part of it. You got chronic stressors running and then on top of it, you have some sort of propensity for autoimmunity or high inflammation. And then you got like all of that combined. And then we're on top of it. You're going to stack like crazy inflammation from workouts. Like no go. I would not recommend that at all. But once you can get that healed, then yeah. And I do believe people can heal from hypothyroidism. And if you want help with hypothyroidism, 
that is my girl L Russ. She is the one. She's just slightly passionate about it. <laughs> if you guys haven't been to her website, lrust.com, she has a free thyroid guide. You should get it. Um, I send all my clients with hypothyroidism. That's where we start is with her, her guide. She'll tell you all the tests to get, the stuff that you need to know. Because frankly, a lot of doctors still, like they don't, I'm sorry. It just feels like they don't care. <laughs> like, it just feels like they're, they, they haven't looked into it further than like, just get your TSH test and moving along and here's your medicine. Like, uh, L and then Dr. Gary Forsman, who is middle path medicine here on Instagram, like go to them. <laughs> he does consults from anywhere. He, people go to him from all over the world. He is like the coolest dude. He's on my podcast, Dr. Gary Forsman. He's so awesome. He, um, he's like, has like shamanic training and Reiki on top of being an internal medicine doctor. Like, yeah, he's the shiz and is, he's cool. Um, he's got a big heart. Um, yeah, check out L. Um, her book is called the paleo thyroid solution. So, um, that is like one instance in which I am a huge fan of something like paleo, paleo autoimmune diets. I don't think everybody needs to be paleo. Honestly, I'm not, I am not on board with like the no beans and like some of the things in paleo like I'm like Meh. I don't think everyone needs to be worried about all those things but if you've got inflammation in your body like paleo can be a really really healing tool for you to use so recommend that any questions about the competition I got my pictures back like the professional pictures but I'll be honest like I feel weird as shit like posting my butt on this <laughs> On the, inter on the internet, but my butt looked good. I was actually really surprised. I was like, oh, better than I thought it did. But um, it feels weird. It feels weird. I don't know if I'm going to share those. <laughs> um, but I will say, like, part of this, too, this next competition I'm doing and, like, wanting to win is just because, like, one, it's just a fun goal for me right now. Like, it's lit a fire under me for some purpose in my training that I haven't had for a minute because I haven't been marathon training or doing anything intentional. So, it's just, like, it's giving me some fun drive. And let's be honest, like, lifting weights is, like, literally my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> I do it every single day. So, why not see how I can do in a competition? So, and I did get a lot of questions on this, too. Uh, a lot of people ask, how come you're not doing figure? Like, you're muscular. Um... Most people in that industry have told me that they don't think I would do well and figure they don't think I have the bone structure for it. It's like you kind of have to have like broader shoulders and I'm really not that strong. When I look at these figure chicks, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> never mind. And then another question I've been getting asked is why I haven't done wellness. Um, wellness basically means you look like a bikini competitor on top and like have like big legs. Um, and I did definitely have the biggest legs on the stage for bikini. And I think that's actually what kind of held me back from winning. Um, but I've been told I'm kind of right on that cusp. And when you look at like the national level wellness competitors, I no. <laughs> and all of a sudden my legs look really small. These are like women who genetically have like huge legs and butt. Like they're so strong. And I, it's, you'll just look it up. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm not at that level. So I'm going to continue to do bikini just for people who are wondering about that. Um, and yeah, I only have 23 more days until this competition. So it's just, it's a fun thing to do and put my mind to the test and see if I can do it. So, um, yeah. So if you want to see my, the bikini program that I'm going to release is going to have exactly how I've been, not, not my exact workouts, but similar, right? It's going to be all glutes, uh, glutes and hamstrings. Uh, pulling in your waist and developing your shoulders more and then yeah burning body fat through nutrition what's up lift tech fitness lift tech fitness is the shiz guys I'm a big fan of their products check them out um, I've been using their hooks lifting hooks and they're like awesome I love your guys lifting hooks like bravo like oh, so much better than the um what are the, the straps called I have them I forgot <laughs> right now what they're called um, Versa grips. I love them so much more than Versa grips. Um, so like, for example, guys, what I'm talking about is like, like if you're doing like a single leg deadlift and your glutes are strong and you can do a lot of weight, but like, um, they're, you're doing them like Romanian deadlift style. It's like hard to hold like a 75 pound weight in my hand for that long. So it's like my hand is limiting my booty gains and that's not cool. So I've been using their lifting hooks for that, for Romanian deadlifts with the barbell. Um, also just like walking lunges, you know, so I can go heavier, good stuff. And your belts and your bands, they're all awesome. Um, 
All right, any questions? All right, I'm gonna close this up then. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm curious your guys' thoughts. I'm curious your guys' thoughts. Like, message me, let me know what you're thinking, what you're wondering. Um, I definitely, I will say, I definitely have removed a lot of my judgments on the industry. Yeah. Um, I think that, so I think I showed this before, but I was meditating the morning of the show and I just kept hearing like, what have you learned? What have you learned? What have you learned? And what I, the, the biggest takeaway I had was that competing in a bodybuilding show is not good or bad. The energy that you bring to it is all that matters. And I don't know if I'd even attach good or bad to that either, but the, the inner, did you guys just hear me say the F word? <laughs> I thought, <laughs> I thought this thing turned off. It told me my iPhone needs to cool down. I don't know if you heard that. Anyway, <laughs> um, so finishing that thought, I learned that the energy that you bring to something is is what will determine the experience. So if you're approaching it in fear and not enoughness and uh, like I need to be loved and validated through my body and blah, 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 that will be your experience. And if you're approaching it in a healthy mindset of I know I'm enough, but I'm pushing into something for a specific goal and I can do this no matter how hard it is, that will be your experience and that's it, right? So um, I learned to just kind of stop judging it so much. And I have learned that there, yeah, there's people in that industry that are doing it from an unhealthy place and there's different people doing it from a healthy place. It's just like any other industry. It's like entrepreneurship. There's some people who are really amazing entrepreneurs because they are afraid that they won't be enough <laughs> and they have to prove to the world that they're valued and there's people that are just owning shit and just like rocking life because they know they can, right? So it's the energy that we approach things with that determines our experience, not like the actual events, you know what I mean? So that's definitely something I learned. All right, well, my phone is probably gonna <laughs> shut off again because I guess it's overheating, so I'm gonna close this up. Thanks guys, have a great weekend, bye.